No, we look at whether or not there's sufficient evidence. Does it demonstrate crimes being committed and is it in the public so interest? So is, is paying public officials a crime? It can be, yes. And our guidance, which we published, the revised guidance today, makes it very clear it can still be a crime. How much does this all cost? Um, for us, it's cost 1.3 million. Um, but it's about making sure that we really look at the evidence properly. We've got to look at cases that come to us from the police and scrutinise them. And actually, if you look at the Court of Appeal judgment, nowhere does it criticise the fact that we have brought any of these prosecutions, nor have any of them been stopped. They've all gone to the jury as well. But, I mean, you don't want to bring prosecutions and have this sort of failure rate, do you? Um, we have reasonable expectation, as I understand it, to bring It's got to be a realistic prospect of conviction, um, which we have thought that there has been. Um, following the Court of Appeal judgment, which was only two weeks ago, we have looked again at whether or not our guidance is right. We supplemented that guidance, and we have looked again, or I've looked again, actually, at, over the last two weeks at all the cases that have been outstanding, and some of those we have changed our Well, decision. I wanted to ask you about that, because this is about Sun journalists, it was about payments to officials, other news organisations, and newspapers have been uh, involved in phone hacking. There are a number of people still on bail, a number of people still possibly facing the prospect of prosecutions. I mean, how many of them are you actually going to go ahead with? Um, we have said today we are prosecuting still. We are still conducting prosecutions against some public officials, um, and there are still some journalists who are facing prosecution for um, payment. Um, I think there are three, um, and obviously we can't get into the facts of those because they were trial. Are you reviewing those cases? Those are ones that we've already reviewed. So we've reviewed all the cases that are currently waiting trial under Operation Elfden, um, and there are only a couple of cases yeah. that we and, still and have yet to make charges. Group, for example. Um, that's very different, and that's not altered at all. So they still remain. So we can expect there will be some big prosecutions there, can we? Um, those that have been charged um, will continue in those cases. I mean, what we're very clear about is that we make these decisions very quickly because we appreciate that people yeah. are waiting trial, and obviously that's what do you event. say uh, to, uh, we saw that Sun journalist there who's uh, just been found not guilty about the way he was treated, was there a need ever for dawn raids and putting people on police bail for three years? Um, that's obviously a matter for the police. Investigations are down to them. That's not um, what the prosecution service yeah, do. You can take a view, can't you? Um, we look at the evidence and we decide whether or not to charge. Do you think people should be treated like that? Um, it's entirely an operational matter for the police, how they go about their investigations. But they are, as it were, catching your victims. Surely you have a view on how those victims are treated? Um, well, they're not victims. Um, so they're, it, the police decide they're operationally independent from us, um, and we will give them advice on the charging and then take the cases through to the court. Of course, there will be people looking at this the other way who will feel, looking at your decision on um, Greville Janna yesterday not to go ahead with the prosecution there, that people who are powerful or well connected including journalists can get away with it in a way that others can't. Well they, they're very different scenarios and very different decisions for different reasons um, and that's absolutely not the case. Um, we have previously been criticised for taking prosecutions against what were seen to be powerful high profile people. Um, we look at each case on its merits. It doesn't matter who it is. We'll look at the evidence and whether or not it's in the public interest um, and who that um, person that we're looking at doesn't actually play any part in our decision making. Has been quite a lot of controversy since you took over your job. Do you feel under pressure at all? Um, so long as I'm convinced I'm making the right decisions um, and we are abiding by the guidance and the code, um, then that's what I'm here to do. Um, I'm not here to make popular decisions, yes. I'm here no, to make the right decisions. No, it's not an answer as to whether you feel under pressure. <laughs> um, I always feel under pressure to make the right decisions, and that's what um, is really important to me, that we make the right decisions. And finally, this word witch hunt has been used about the uh, investigations into particularly news group journalists following the uh, phone hacking affair. Do you think it's fair to use that term? No, I don't think it's fair. There has been in public inquiries, there was obviously a lot of concern, there was a very thorough police investigation, and then we're duty-bound to look at that investigation and decide whether or not to bring any prosecutions. You're looking at the other crimes in the world, it's worth the money, is it? Um, we certainly think so. We haven't been criticised by the courts for bringing those prosecutions, um, and we continue to keep them under review. So um, I think we were right to do so, and we're right to make the decision that we have done now.